welcome in to the Turk Talk Recruiting Review. This is the day after the early signing period started. I am Wayne Viner, Mason Viner, and guest Ahmed Gafir or Gafir the Turtle on Twitter joins us to discuss the pretty good recruiting hall that Maryland brought in. Uh, we're going to get started right off the top in alphabetical order and probably the number one flip that Maryland has with J. Sean Barham from St. Francis. I'll go with Mason. What's it mean to have a St. Francis pipeline start up for the Maryland Terrapins? Yeah, it's got to mean everything to Maryland, you know, and um, you got guys that are from all over this area that go to St. Francis to get opportunities to go to the big schools. And it's really good to see them go to a school like Maryland. Uh, you know, Barham, a guy that started off at the math ends up at St. Francis. Ahmed, you follow this a lot closer than I do on the high school side. What does it mean to you for the Terps to start picking up guys from St. Francis? Yeah, this is a, this is a big one, especially with Jay Sean, you know, a guy that was uh, arguably the no number one overall target on Maryland's board from beginning to end. Um, you could definitely say that he was top defensive target, um, you know, uh, but definitely a guy, like you said, 6'3", 230 pounds, um, especially considering the the linebackers that, that left the program, getting a guy like him in the fold uh, and in January is really big, um, really top-notch guy, guy that had a lot of uh, relationships with the staff, but um, really, really quality ad to, to be able to close this uh, really in the final hour. This is a four-star linebacker, 65th ranked player in the country. He had committed to South Carolina and, and Beamer. What did Beamer have to say about him flipping to Maryland, Ahmed? Yeah, he said that it sounded like there was a uh, greater plan. He said uh, on, on uh, last Saturday, about 10, 15 minutes after Jason committed, uh, he got a call that saying from someone uh, in the area saying that it was all a big part of the plan. He was still going to flip to Maryland on Wednesday. Um, Loxley went with a little bit different of an answer, said it was a lot of hard work and uh, pretty much a sleepless night to be able to get, get everything done. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, definitely definitely difference in, in uh, explanation. But uh, at the end of the day, Maryland was a team that was able to come out on top. All right, the Terps bring him in over others who are interested. Of course, South Carolina, Penn State, Oklahoma. This is a great get for Loxley. We'll talk about uh, the coaching staff at St. Francis when we bring up Jay Sean's teammate, which is Andre Roy, in a few minutes. Sticking alphabetical order, the brother of Terrapin defensive lineman Tank Booker, Bam Booker, Cincinnati, Ohio. He was a Sports Illustrated All-American candidate. He's the Cincinnati Defensive Player of the Year for the area. To me, he looks really, really super capable, and he chooses Maryland over Cincinnati, Cal, Purdue, Pittsburgh, and Kentucky. Uh, Mason, is this guy as good as he looks on paper? I think he's a raw player. He has a lot of you – know, he's got a large skill set, and he adds a spot where Maryland needs it. Maryland needs linebackers right now, and that's what Andrew Bam Booker is now. I kind of look at all the accolades and all that and look at the star rating and look at some of the evaluations that were done, and they don't necessarily add up to me. You know, Cincinnati is a strong area for football. This guy is definitely a top-tier player in that area. It gives Maryland a lot of size. Uh, we may see him at the jack linebacker. We may see him at inside. I, I think that they're going to look to address some of the inside linebacker um, issues just to get depth there if they can. But you look down the list, Maryland needs guys in this size range that can play this um, variety of positions, and Andrew Bam Booker definitely can for them. Ahmed, uh, what's your take? Yeah, I think this is really, uh, really quality. And he was originally a 2021 recruit, and pretty much the way this was all uh, able to be done was uh, he great shirted, which means that he just simply attended, uh, you know, either a community college or a local college um, for the first semester, and then he's able to enroll early uh, the following semester. And the reason Maryland was able to facilitate all of that, even though he was good enough to be able to sign with the program last fall. Um, Maryland just needed to 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 kind of move around scholarships and and uh, the Booker family was very happy 
uh, with Tank's progress, the older brother, and that was why the family and the coaching staff were able to come to the agreement that Booker was able to sign essentially a year later. Um, so when you think of especially that situ uh, situation, um, how it was able to be done, um, you know, I think it's kind of that third party validation that Loxie talks about. Um, and then also just at the linebacker room, like I said before, just with the transfers out to get another guy that's going to be here in early uh, January, uh, that, that's big time. All right. Uh, Ramon Brown, he was spoke, uh, six foot, 212 pound from Midlothian, Virginia. His other suitors, and this is another late flip. So Virginia Tech leads that list. West Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. This is a guy that uh, you know a little bit of the backstory, uh, Mr. Gafir the Turtle. What's the story on Ramon Brown? Yeah, he was a guy that um, yeah, he, he he got a chance to take a second visit to Maryland uh, the the second week or the first weekend in December two weeks ago uh, with his older brother. Um, and Maryland kind of always stayed on top of him, stayed in the mix ever since Justin Fuente got fired. Maryland was one of the the remaining finalists before Brown uh, opted for Virginia Tech going into summer. Um, and again, when we talk about Barham pre-existing relationships and the coaching staff with Elijah Brooks, that played uh played a hand here as well uh Elijah Brooks recruited Damatha or Brown to Damatha when uh Ramon Brown was uh, going into sixth grade I believe it was um so Elijah Brooks was really able to just kind of pick up um and and, and continue where they where they left off um and at that point now Maryland's able to really fill another key position uh as a result of outgoing transfers uh to be able to do it with the local guy Flip him from Virginia Tech. Um, that definitely uh, definitely adds a little bit to it. But uh, tenth ranked running back in the country, seventh in, in Virginia, ran for over a thousand yards, fourteen seasons at Manchester this year. Um, definitely a quality addition. Mason, do you have anything to add to that, or should we move on to Andre Roy? Yeah, good spot again for Elijah Brooks. Uh, it's not all about Dematha, as we've talked about him in the past. It's this guy's in reach throughout this area and, and this shows that this is why they landed him and it just shows loxley never really gives up in recruiting uh, until it's over he stays on guys so when a coach gets fired or leaves someplace he's got an opportunity to come in and, and be that next best team or be you know end up finishing in first and getting the player this is uh, i think shows a lot of what maryland's recruiting style is that they keep these connections with guys uh, kind of from that grassroots level all right so we talked about a flip from south carolina we talked about Loxley's relationships and being able to get Bam Booker to take a different academic path so he can fit into Maryland. Talked about a flip from Virginia Tech. That's exciting. It should add some spice to the bowl game later this month. And then the one that I like the best is a flip from Penn State. Anytime you can beat Coach Frank or James Franklin, you've done well. Maryland brings in Andre Roy, St. Francis Academy. Top rated offensive lineman in the state, 14th ranked player in Maryland. This guy's a legit 6'6, 320. Ahmed, you told me a story where a couple of years ago he was towering over you in an interview. I need to tell everybody yeah. what, what you told me. Yeah, it was actually kind of weird. It was, uh, it was, uh, I was at our Athletic Republic uh, out in uh, PG County. Um, it's run by Mark McCain. He used to coach over at DeMatha way back. And then uh, Justin Winters, who currently coaches at St. Francis used to be an assistant up in Maryland. Uh, and I remember he, Justin Winters was just um, sending all of his guys over one by one so I could, you know, meet them, do interviews, things like that. And he'd send over Andre Roy. And I mean, he was 6'6", 300 when he was a sophomore. I remember I shook his hand and I looked over at Justin and I screamed, sophomore? And he goes, sophomore. I was like, all right. And I'm pretty sure I told Andre Roy then that that was the day that uh, I was going to start keeping in touch with him. But, yeah, you could just kept really tell ever since then that he's a guy that uh, just physically imposing tackle. Um, and I think a guy, when you kind of get him in, he gets in here in January, um, you, you kind of rework that the, the body a little bit, get his body composition a little bit better. Um, and I think this, this could be a guy that uh, helps with that tackle depth. It, it sounds promising. Mason? Uh, you're part of an alumni network with the head coach at St. Francis with Messiah. What's it mean to have a Terp over at St. Francis? Definitely a guy that grew up in this area. I went to Wooten, which is where I went to high school. He was involved in the alumni community. And, you know, growing up in this area, Maryland's not always the first choice for everybody, but it's talked about a lot and generally has a positive, especially now when it comes to academics, um, has a really positive 
you know, feel to it. Maryland's a big time school, especially if you want to have more than just football. It, it's there's a lot of positive people, one in the Wooten community about Maryland and then just sur- surrounding this program, you know, that was really held down by Michigan. Now with a guy that grew up around here and knows what Maryland's about and, and knows what Coach Foxley and, and Coach Brooks are about. Does it give Maryland a real leg up to have him uh, as the head coach? I would say there's just this, there's some pre-existing relationships. Um, I wouldn't say it gives Maryland a leg up. Um, I think Loxley, Loxley, really a lot of those those guys on that staff um, on the St. Francis staff are guys that come from other WC, WCSC schools or local schools. So um, I would even say Loxley and a lot of the coaches, they they have pretty strong ties to a lot of these guys. So I uh, wouldn't say leg up, but I would say that uh, Maryland has been able to establish pretty consistent um, and dependable relationship with them. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Call Superior Tours for your trip to the Pinstripe Bowl to see the Terps on December 29th. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm and why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country, as well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jacklitz Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Hiring the Jacklitz Law Group was the best decision anyone in our family has ever made. Who's your lawyer? The Jacklitz Law Group. Who are the big dogs? The Jacklitz Law Group. Woof! At 855 Big dog one. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. All right, so we skipped out on the alphabetical order. We'll bring in another offensive lineman to get back in the alphabetical order. Colton Deary, center, Glen Mills, Pennsylvania, 12th ranked center, according to ESPN. Plays both offensive defensive line at Malvern Prep. Um, at 6'4", 295, does this guy have a chance to actually play and, and play earlier rather than later at Maryland? Ahmed. Yeah, um, this is a guy that they kind of wanted as an interior lo- guy, uh, as a center. Um, and Deary kind of fits that and tested really well. Actually uh, camped it after he had committed um, and tested really, well, really, really well among the highest offensive linemen that Maryland had brought in uh, all summer. Um, he's a guy that will also wrestle for Maryland as well. I believe in Malvern Prep, he's only uh, had two losses in his four-year career uh, as a wrestler. Um, so a guy, and like I said, I think every, one thing that I consistently heard about him is he's a winner. Um, and when you talk about Loxley and the type of guys that he brings in, he he, he routinely brings up the guys that have that winning uh, mindset behind them and then the the, the leadership traits to, to go along with it. So um, I think Deary's, Deary's a really sneaky ad. Mason? Yeah, I agree with that. I think sneaky ads is a good way to put it. He had some, uh, a lot of positive big press from some of the 24-7 writers, uh, some of the more national writers there at the end. He played alongside one of the best offensive linemen in this class from uh, one of his teammates at Malvern that's going to Ohio State. Malvern's a place that puts out generally really quality mindset individuals. They, they have a really strong program, especially in lacrosse. They put out a lot of top tier players and and on the wrestling mat, they put out a lot of college athletes. And I think for Maryland, it's really good when they have the opportunity, when they see a guy that they want, that they go out and they get him. Yeah. And really, I love the wrestling aspect, especially when you're center. It's all about uh, low positioning. The wrestling is going to help them there. Now, I'm big on not putting my freshman out there unless I have to, but Maryland may be a little bit thin at center, which is a position that Deary plays. So maybe you know, I, I still see the shuffle of moving a guy like Spencer Anderson back in front of him just to get those guys in the strength and conditioning room, get the weight on them uh, that they want before they have to throw them out there. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll see. You made a point before 
uh, in talking that Maryland has gotten to the level where when you come in as a freshman, especially a lineman, you don't have to play right away. We certainly went through a period where that was not the case. What's the advantage you get for not having to play your 18-year-old freshman at the Big Ten level? Well, I think number one in the COVID year era and in the uh, really stronger Big Ten programs, you don't want an 18-year-old guy going up against a 23-year-old or now. I mean, hell, we're even seeing guys up to 24 playing college football. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot of you know, age difference there, the strength and conditioning programs, the difference in uh, opportunity and, and the level of them and the amount of time that goes into the diet, what they eat, what they lift. You know, Maryland did a big thing with uh, that face scan system that they have in their weight room. So guys can go in there and get individualized workouts without the strength and conditioning team having to be around. You, know, you start to add these things up, the amount of time that you spend in college uh, as an athlete on your craft and and on where they want to get your body is it shows over time and freshmen aren't at that spot they get that you know if you enter in january you get one full strength and conditioning cycle before you're out there on the field if you come in uh with the rest of the team in august you get you know maybe three weeks in there so uh for maryland you know i think a lot of the upgraded play has been for two things, consistency and coaching on the offense and defensive line, and then the consistency of getting guys like Mason Lunsford, who had three years in the program or two and a half years in the program uh, before they had hit the field. And the result just shows from a guy that wasn't as highly rated. All right, we're going to speed it up here a little bit and talk about Perry Fisher from Tallahassee, played quarterback and defensive back for Lincoln High School. She, he chooses Maryland over Florida State, Purdue, and Tulane. Mason, this is a guy that you said was a, was a good get. When the name came up, why is that? Yeah, he, he get, won a lot of accolades as a quarterback. I think he's a really good athlete. Obviously, he's going to make that transition from quarterback to wide receiver. Maryland's got a couple guys in that in this class uh, listed at wide receiver that have taken snaps at quarterback, which, uh, God forbid, we ever see the Sean Petty situation again. We got a couple guys that can step into that role. Uh, I just... I, I like the footwork. I like the athleticism, and uh, I really like it when they pull athletes out of Florida that fly under the radar because there's a lot of good players down there, especially at the skill positions. All right. Uh, next one will be Gavin Gibson, Mooresville, North Carolina, top 25 player in the state. Uh, he picks Maryland over Virginia and Navy. Ahmed, what do you know about him? Yeah, he was a, a prior prior Navy commit who really uh, started to to pick up steam um, through the fall season with his play and uh, ended up being final two Maryland UVA uh, UVA was kind of battling Maryland there and then Bronco Mendenhall obviously uh, uh, stepped down so that kind of tilted the tide um, a really quality addition a really smart player from everything that I've uh, heard and uh, another big uh, note with him is that he is among the early enrollees. Good, good. Leon Houghton, wide receiver, 6'4", 210, slightly bigger guy, top 25 player in Virginia, chooses Maryland over Penn State, Georgia, Nebraska, Pitt, Tech, and Virginia. Ahmed, were those offers committable offers? Mm -hmm. uh, no, not all of them. Like Georgia at one point was was kind of chewing lukewarm interest. Penn State was was reaching out in contact, things like that. But uh, I would say at the end, um, it was pretty much Maryland, Vanderbilt, um, and maybe if Brock and Hall stayed, Virginia would have been a lot more viable. Um, but it was pretty much Maryland, Vanderbilt kind of battle at the end. Uh, and Maryland was in a in a good position for, I would say, the, the second half of the fall. All right, what's the add to the receiving room, Mason? Yeah, I think height is, is really a thing. Maryland is fairly small in the wide receiver room, especially with the guys they have coming on. You know, Ty Felton's one of the only bigger guys they got really coming up. You look at the rest of the round, Marcus Fleming's a small guy. Uh, DeGeneres is a small guy. They got a lot of, they need to bring in that, you know, Carlos Carrier, Dante Dimas size guy just to have him. I think they get that. Uh, they have it in the tight end room, but they need it as out of a wide receiver, which they get here. Um, a, a guy that's just going to need some work. All these wide receivers, I think there's going to be an opportunity for all of them to compete for about one or two spots, maybe on the field. Uh, they're going to need to get that footwork down, get the playbook down, and then we'll see which one of them gets the playing time this upcoming year. You got it. Preston Howard, an actual tight end at 6'5", 215 from one of Bruce's favorites, McDonough. He's the sixth rated player in Maryland. Uh, plays quarterback at McDonough. Maryland had a, a run of guys named Tice who played tight end 
or quarterback and all ended up being tight ends in the pros. Where does a Preston Howard fit in, Ahmed? Uh, yeah, I think he definitely kind of fits in as a tight end role. But, you you, you know, you kind of mentioned, you know, you uh, listed as an athlete or, or has a chance. He came in pretty much as an athlete. Um, so a guy that, you know, even at Demet, uh, McDonough this year, got a chance to play quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, linebacker, safety. I mean, he was really doing Mr. Everything for him. Um, uh, and uh, the McDonough coaching staff was very high, highly of, spoke very highly of him. Um, so I think he's a guy that, um, you know, has basketball background as well. Um, has has some pretty good athleticism to him, can definitely enhance that, um, you know, through time. But at 6'5", 215, you can't really match that. I think he's a guy that has proven that he can catch the ball this year. Um, so now it's about, you know, kind of refining the the technique and de- transitioning him into that tight end. Well, last year, Maryland gets Dante Trader. We've yet to see him on the lacrosse field, but he's been impressive as a freshman safety. Here's your next McDonough add to the Maryland program in Preston Howard. Mason likes getting guys from Florida. Keon Kindred, Bell Glade, Florida, 6'6", 291 offensive lineman. What do we know about him? Mason? Yeah, they take him and his teammate Nonar, and, and it's going to be two guys that they need to develop over time. But luckily enough, I believe both of them are early enrollees this uh, cycle. So, again, you get ahead in the strength and conditioning program. You get guys started. I don't really expect to see either of them on the field, given what Maryland's got in the offensive line, which, again, is a good thing. But they're going to have to find a way to develop these guys. Coach Braswell is going to uh, need to put in some work with the offensive linemen they brought in. And we'll kind of see where things end up. They got a couple guys floating around that they kind of took that were in this. Uh, one of them transferring out being Zach Perkins, where you're like, we got to really develop this guy. He's not exactly where they want him. So he decides to hit the road. But there's a couple guys floating around, and we'll see kind of how this shapes up. Guys like Marcus Finger that they've taken that maybe they wouldn't have if they won some other recruiting battles around. I don't really think Nonar and Kindred fit into that. Uh, Florida with the late push, but Maryland holds on, and they get two really, really well-sized guys out of Belgrade, Florida, the home of a guy that I've had on my podcast, William Likely, a couple of times. So Terps uh, trying to build a pipeline out of one of the uh, better football areas in Florida. And that teammate is Jacavion Nonar. Uh, Shalik Knotts from Monroe, North Carolina, 6'2", 190, four-star, ESPN 300, 30th-ranked receiver in the country. Pretty good. Um, but he, he committed a while ago. He signs yesterday. How's that change the buzz about him, Ahmed? Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. It's uh, He really entered the week as the only four-star in Maryland's class, and and now, uh, obviously, the, the late flips, um, you know, added to that to Ali, but Nas is a guy that you know, Maryland was re- really in hot pursuit. Uh, I think when I first heard his name back in March, April, and they were like, yeah, he's our number one receiver on our board. And they did a great job of staying consistent, uh, staying thorough. Um, I remember, I can't remember the number of times uh, Knotts and his coach would say that Maryland is the school that is recruiting him the hardest. Um, so Maryland really liked this guy. They're really happy they got him. Like you mentioned, 6'2", 190 pounds, um, currently in the middle of basketball season. So like we mentioned with Preston Howard, has that basketball background, um, had some uh, health uh, concern, not concerns, but just some things he was battling through going into senior year, but uh, got everything squared away. He's good to go. And uh, finished with almost 3,000 receiving yards over his four years. So um, when you look at that wide receiver room and look at the type of offense, Chalik has uh, even as much as recently as two weeks ago said, you know, that offense is is a big reason why I'm coming. So um, definitely, definitely a good ad. All right. So we have Tarheeb Still, who is the all-time leader in the state of New Jersey in receiving yards. He plays corner for Maryland. Now we bring in uh, Chalik Knotts who has 42 touchdowns, which is second all-time in his county for touchdowns. We're starting to get guys that are coming in with a high school record book, and that has to pretend good things uh, for the Maryland team overall. Maryland goes the JUCO route for Maximus McCree from Kansas City, plays Iowa Central Community College. I like the, the Iowa guys they brought in. They've done well on the defensive line. Um, who has been starting for Maryland on the offensive line from Iowa? Mason. The center. Oh, Eric Harris. Yeah. Eric Harris had some really good run. Jahari Branch came in that route. He's had some good run. We'll see what they can do with Max McCree. He's a little bit older. He's an ESPN JUCO top 50, two-time All-American at the community college level. 
This guy probably ends up on the field before the freshman, just because that's the way Loxley's been doing it. And we mentioned Jacavian Nonar a moment ago. He's 6'7", 285. So maybe we can have him go out there and block uh, maybe on uh, extra points. See if we can help out the specials with some of these guys. Daniel Owens, defensive line, 6'2", 245, Pikesville, Calvert Hall, number 21 player in Maryland. Ahmed, you, you know a lot about him. What's Maryland getting with Daniel Owens? Yeah, this is a great guy. I, I honestly think this might be one of the most mature kids I've ever come across. Keandre Jones, I think uh, it will always come to mind when I think of that. But Daniel Owens is right there. He's a guy that is entering uh, his football career with aspirations to become an engineer. So um, it's uh, that, that's quite a workload. But 6'2", 245, uh, Maryland began building a relationship with him in the spring. Uh, Brian Williams did a good job of you know just staying staying on top of him weekly. Uh, Syracuse was kind of the, the main school that was pushing, but uh, once Daniel Owens ended up taking the visit, uh, I believe it was that final week in July, um, Maryland started to begin to trend for him. Um, really good guy, comes in, 21st ranked player in Maryland, uh, finished in the uh, all MIAA conference, uh, all conference, excuse me. Um, so definitely a really good player. Played lacrosse and won't play this year. Um, he has some some hand injuries that he's working through. Should be good, no problem. But uh, really like the, the ad this year. So we're saying that we got a 6'2", 245 defensive lineman who might make it on the field in lacrosse? Well, he plays he plays lacrosse. He, he's giving it up for, for senior year of high school now. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that would be impressive. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Sare, wise. I don't know what more you can say about the guy locally. He's a four-star quarterback, top-rated quarterback in the state, number eight-ranked player in Maryland. Is uh, is this a guy who we got as a position of need, or is this somebody that uh, actually going to see the field as a quarterback for Maryland? I'll, yeah, I'll so go with Maryland, Mason on that. Yeah, Maryland definitely wanted to take like the, the two quarterbacks this cycle. Um, and, and, and I think Zare he almost pulled off his second consecutive state championship in his second year of starter, uh, obviously get felt a little bit short against Quince Orchard in the end there. Um, uh, but he's a guy, um, Maryland did announce him as an early enrollee. Um, and from asking around, it actually does not sound like he's going to enroll early. It sounds like he's expected to be on campus in, uh, next summer. So it sounds like program, uh, it sounds like that's still up in the air, actually. Um, so we'll we'll see. But at the end of the day, Maryland really needed to address the long term debt behind Leah. So Saray uh, helps with that. I do expect Maryland to go after another quarterback, though. As a transfer, transfer or uh, as a regular national hard, signing? Hard, hard to say because now you, you're in that period where you have unsigned guys going into the February signing period, and I I think that Maryland would end up preferring a high school guy. I don't know with 100 percent certainty. Things can change. It's only a day out from from early signing day, um, so so we'll see. Um, but I think my gut says high school again. All right, uh, Levain Scruggs, athlete number twenty one, player in Maryland, Archbishop Spalding. Uh, is another guy that looks like he's played all over the field. Safety corner. Um, where do you see him project, Mason, for the Maryland Terrapins? Well, I would hope corner, but I think the answer is probably going to be safety. Uh, Maryland really likes the Spalding guys. They really like the coaching and the culture there. These guys, another thing that they really drive home at Spalding, and, and this is across multi, multiple sports where they've really started just to raise their profile overall as a school with sports, is they get guys that are really dedicated to doing things the right way. So Maryland uh, obviously is looking for that. They really, again, they like the coaching staff. They like the guys they're getting out of Spalding. They also got Kellen Wyatt, the linebacker uh, out of Spalding in this class. I think these guys, and and I heard uh, on my show last night from another recruiting expert that they're going to get some guys that really know how to play special teams when they pull guys from Spalding. And, and that's some a spot where Merrill needs a lot of help. All right. Octavian Smith is a huge get. Probably the last guy who signed up yesterday. Silver Spring, Paint Paint Branch, four-star receiver. He is the top offensive player in the state, 13th ranked athlete in the nation. In the end, Ahmed, who did Octavian Smith choose Maryland over? You know, that's kind of hard to say. You could say that Penn State, um, you know, they were kind of lurking at times. Boston College made a late push. um, But really, ever since he decommitted from Northwestern, 
um, once he got onto Maryland's campus that first time. It it even felt like Maryland was to lose. I mean, it was uh it was just kind of uh, Maryland always had an edge, and then it just seemed to grow more and more and more over time. Um, so I thought it was a really good job of consistency by this staff to be able to get in there, things like that. And um, you know, really, really, uh, like you said, he was the last guy to sign up yesterday of uh, 19th pledge of uh, 2021 first team all met was named Moco, all, all outstanding player. Um, so he'll he'll play receiver at Maryland. Mason, what's he give Maryland, or who's he probably to you? Who is he most like that's already been a term? I think he's a really unique player. Just, you know, you get this a lot with kids that, especially at Montgomery County Public Schools, where football, you know, is, I wouldn't say dominated by the private schools, but the private schools generally take a, a lot of the football players uh, that are really, really talented. You get a chance when you stay in the public route to play a lot of places. I, I really see him as maybe a guy that, Again, is going to need to see once we get into camp what kind of work. I think he's got a ton of speed uh, and can really make an impact on the field for Maryland if they need him. And this is another spot where I say I don't really want to see very very many freshmen on the field. Uh, but wide receiver is one of the spots where you can kind of live with that. If they get him in the right spots, he can definitely beat people with his speed. And then a guy that they're just going to need to find a way to get the ball in his hands. And, and Mike Loxley likes to bring in guys, you know, he's a big – um, best player over best play kind of guy. This is this goes into that category because you get a guy that once he gets the ball can can really make a move and go. Caleb Wheatland, linebacker, Centerville, goes to Avalon. Top 15 player in Virginia, 21st ranked inside linebacker in America. That was a pretty good, it's a pretty good stat line right there. However, uh, as far as his suitors, you look at Utah State Liberty. Old Dominion and Ball State. What makes Caleb Wheatland a take for Maryland, and why weren't more big programs on him? Ahmed. Yeah, I mean, he was another that um, I think. The, I'll take the latter question first. Why weren't more pro programs on him? That I can't answer to, but I can say that Maryland, uh, like they continue to take advantage of just the, the the sheer amount of talent. There's so much talent that gets overlooked, and especially he was a guy that was at Westfield transferred over to Avalon as a result of that COVID year. So they're it, getting that recognition that, that I mean, that's so, so got, became so much harder. But for a guy like Wheatley, when he got to Avalon, where Tyree Spinner knows all the coaches at Maryland, it, you know, Maryland's able to, yeah. to get get a, get a leg up on these guys. They brought him in on campus, I believe in June. Yep. Uh, I believe the first time was the workout. The second time he came up and ended up announcing his commitment the, the following day. Um, so I think this is a really, really good, good guy. Um, he might be my sleeper in this class because I think yep. this is a guy that he can he can really make an impact and especially to coming downhill and run support. Um, and when we talk about early enrollees, he's a guy that that will be there in January. Yeah, a guy that I really like, too. He's my sleeper pick uh, of this class. And I, I kind of have testament to what you just said there. If Tyree Spinner picks up the phone, he calls Coach Locks and says, hey, I got a guy for you that's kind of flying under the radar. That's a phone call you want to listen to. Maryland uh, and and Spinner has given Locks a lot of players like your Trayvon Diggs, you know, guys out of Avalon. Um, Noah Taylor, another player that came out of Avalon that's transferring from Virginia that I think Maryland may have an eye on just because of that connection. They got a pipeline with the coaches over there. Avalon's a school that gives a lot of kids uh, that kind of grace your ear, put some reclasses. It, they do a lot of stuff to get their athletes in a good position. And Coach Spinner, when he picks up the phone, to, is a call that Mike Loxley is definitely going to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> Lionel Whitaker, Tallahassee, Florida, Ricard's High School. Uh, Tallahassee is an actually in your neighborhood down south, Mason, but you've heard of this kid. 91st ranked cornerback in the nation. Um, to me, this is one of the types of guys that Maryland recruits as a freshman who might get on the field because Maryland needs cornerbacks. He picks Maryland over Tennessee, Nebraska, and West Virginia. What do you, what do you make of him, Mason? Yeah, Maryland was uh, pursuing a handful of corners in this class. I don't really think they filled exactly what they wanted to at corner in terms of numbers, but you're seeing, again, the evolution of Maryland as a recruiting uh kind of program and as they're recruiting what they're trying to figure out what they want to do under coach Loxley. And instead of going out and taking some guys that they may or may not been comfortable with, they really like Whitaker. So they took him and they're going to look to add to the cornerback position group, the defensive back position group through the transfer portal. Uh, what you're getting out of him is again, kind of the longer corner that I think fits into the defense they want to play. They're going to 
if they stick with Coach Stewart, it's going to be a lot of man-to-man. They need corners that can do that, and that's that's almost a unique thing to find at this point at the high school level, at least um, from the ball that I've been watching. Kellen Wyatt, last guy on the list alphabetically, 6'1", 225. His name's already come up. Uh, Ahmed, where does he fit in as a Maryland Terrapin? Yeah, he fits perfectly as that, that Sam Backer uh, for Maryland. Um, I, I think he's a guy that – um, he played an out, as an outside uh, backer for Spalding this year, lined up a little bit at defensive end uh, as well, um, and and just was an asset in run support, does a really good job sealing the edge. But I've I've watched him before, um, cover the slot receiver, cover the outside receivers, and he has that athleticism um, to go down uh, – you could go down the field and be able to to, to cover. Um, I think that is obviously the, the biggest transition is obviously just refining the techniques, making sure you're like turning your head, things like that. Just the small things to just help take it to the next level. Um, but I think he's a guy that um, I actually had said that I thought he was going to be the first commit this cycle. He ended up being the second. Um, and when you look at it, he was a all demo, all uh, MIAA conference selection. Um, so really, uh, really happy with this guy. And, Comes from uh, Kyle Schmidt, former Terp as well. So uh, definitely, definitely a um, good, good addition. All righty, guys. Well, thanks for chiming in. We went a little long in this segment, probably about twice as long as I thought we would, but that some really good stuff. You can find more from Ahmed Gafir on Twitter at Gafir the Turtle. And you can also find everything that he writes at Inside the Black and Gold. And how much is it to uh, subscribe to that on Substack? Yeah, it's, uh, $8 a month. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, me or Chipotle for one, one time a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. If you're a Turk fan, you should check that out. Mason, thanks for dropping in. We will do this again as we preview Maryland's trip to the Pinstripe Bowl later this month. Thanks for watching.